Welcome Legends fans for another Elder Scrolls Legends news update for July 18th, 2017. Today we'll be talking about the recent car changes added to the game, Bethesda's actually listening to fans and Direwolf as well, and making some core changes to many cars people had issues with since the release of Heroes of Skyrim. So I do definitely want to thank them, and a little special thing for you guys out there viewing this video as well, I'm going to be showcasing some gameplay from basically the funnest deck I've ever made, my Graveyard Journey of Sovereign Grod deck links in the description for the deck bill. Let's jump right into these new updates. So as you guys will see right here, the biggest one off the bat, everybody's been asking for it, is Echo of Akatosh. So Echo Toxas has been changed to when you draw a creature, give a random keyword. Before it was summon, give creatures in your deck a random keyword. This is a um, huge change guys. This is a humongous change. Before Echo of Akatosh affected your whole entire deck at turn 6. Once it was played, your whole deck got crazy amount of keywords. Now, those people out there who had decks based around Illusionary Mimic combo with Echo of Akatosh, that whole entire combo is completely gone from the game. Illusionary Mimic and Echo of Akatosh does not work well together anymore for guaranteeing success by giving Illusionary Mimic all the keywords. Some of you guys will know what I'm talking about here but it was also a really cool combo that people were able to pull off and it was actually one of the few ways you could make something that was actually more strategic than just the plain and simple randomness of Echo of Akatosh. I do definitely like this change though when you summon a creature it gets when you draw a creature you get a random keyword. This is actually makes it a little bit better than Mundestone because all the creature needs to do is go into your hand and if you have a lot of creatures in your deck that might really work out and if you have a lot of drawing possibility it might work out but for me as a player and as some people if I actually agree with me already, this is amazing news. I can't believe that I'm just so happy they're doing this because now I get all my soul gems back. I was following the hype when Akatosh first came out. I was like, what? A creature that gives everything in my deck keywords? I gotta craft two copies of this. I got one from a legendary pack and I got the rest from crafting them and then I realized I had three and guess what guys? I haven't used these cards in over a week. I am not the biggest fan of Echo of Akatosh right now the way it used to be so I'm glad I'm going to be able to scrap them and get my soul gems back and that's obviously a big news right there as well we will be able to get our soul gems back from going ahead and discarding these creatures so let's go on to the next big change where everybody's been waiting for as well commander commander has been changed so as you guys see right here commander has been reduced to only give plus one one and i actually like this right here now if you combo this with something maybe like a divine favor or something like that it wouldn't be too bad because that two two was a little too aggressive now i know there's probably some people out there would have preferred to see the cost increase or even the cost increase and then it drops down to uh still only is a one one because uh, one one on your whole entire deck can still be very crazy powerful for a lot of small minions. I think it's fair. I think 1-1 one, one is okay and I already as some of you guys will know I know that I'm a higher ranked player I was beating commander decks. You guys will see it and in the video you're about to watch right now uh, well not this video I have another video up where I completely destroy commander with the deck I'm using right here and Echo Akatosh. I was able to destroy them before the this new patch and I'm sure after the patch it's not even going to be that much of an issue so you guys are definitely going to see it. Sorry this video you're watching right now the gameplay is of me winning against Alduin. Alduin comes wipe everything out and I just still win the match because it's crazy. I have like crazy videos with this deck. Alright let's keep on going from there guys. Let's take a look. So command and then Bringer of Nightmare, another card I know people love, but I just never had a big issue with this card because I've only lost because of its effect once. Now, maybe because that's just been lucky. Maybe all these weeks I've been playing since Heroes of Skyrim, I just haven't met the right player to kick my butt consistently with Bringer of Nightmare. But I understand from watching players what the issue was. So with this card being changed to a 7 cost, definitely makes it a little bit more interesting. Now, there is good and bad with this. Like now, Thieves Guild Recruit can, re you know, could reduce the cost down to a 5. So that might be a little bit more playable for assassin type deck. But in the same sense, I still think the 7 cost in general is not a bad. I mean, the effect definitely when it works out is absolutely amazing. Especially for a card that is not a unique and it could work on your own creature or your other creature. I know some people are still not going to be too happy with this, but I thought it was fine. And the reason I think it was fine because I wasn't a big, had much issue with this card before it was patched anyways. I just really just did it, guys. All right, let's move on from there. The other big change right over here, ladies and gentlemen, is the biggest one of all. I think this is huge. Belitant Giant. Breakthrough Summon. Unsummon a creature in this lane or destroy enemy creature's support. The key change here is this lane. Before he could just, uh, unsummon a creature from any lane, 
You could summon them in the left lane and unsummon the creature in the right lane. So this is awesome. This actually brings them in line with Manticora. If some of you guys were in the beta, the closed beta that is, if you remember how powerful Manticora was, Manticora used to come on the field, you could summon them in the left lane as a guard and destroy a creature in the right lane. Back then, Manticora was so top tier. Then they reduced it back down to having to be in the same lane, making better off of traded, making the gameplay a little bit more interesting. I think this lines it up really well and as the developers themselves have actually stated, it definitely makes sense because now like uh, Archmage is going to be able to play it a lot more. The the Burgula, those kind of um, high cost legendaries that are creatures that are high cost but don't have any unsummon effects, now it's going to feel like you're not getting a punch as much because he has to be played in the same lane to really got, get rid of those creatures and at least it's going to be a lot more interesting for the trading ability because if you have three creatures out and you only, he only summons one and not played in the left lane, at least you have a creature that might be able to trade with him because so many games it ends up because of his ability, because of the fact that he could be summoned in the right or left lane and then leaving you completely unaware of how to get to him if you don't have a creature that can move to that lane. I just think it's a really good change and I, I know maybe people won't agree with me but I think it's going to have a big impact on the way the meta plays because this is a very highly used card in strength decks. This is a very powerful card guys. Let's move on from there. And last but not least, on card changes wise, Dawnstar Healer has been changed very slightly to work like Relentless Raider. Now it says after an enemy rune is destroyed, gain 3 health. Before it said when an enemy rune was destroyed. So now the card works in the sense like if an um, enemy rune is destroyed and you're having um, Ring of N Nama, the ring that regenerates health, I'll just show it to you guys right now because I'm saying the names completely wrong. I do apologize guys, as many of you guys know, I'm horrible. I'm absolutely horrible with names, but you guys will know what I am talking about once I show it to you in a split second. Buy them. There you go. See how good of a YouTube I bring it right up. So you guys know the combo. But these two together are very dangerous. So now what could happen if your opponent sees that you're playing with this ring and Dawnstar Hero and they, they draw out a prophecy um piercing javelin, they could javelin this before its effect actually goes ahead and activates. So that's what's basically happening right there, guys. Alright? If I if I'm understanding it correctly, if I'm not, I do apologize. I do apologize if I'm wrong, but I think that's what's happening here. Okay, guys, so that's basically all the changes there. Um, only I do need to also men mention, you can return this card as well. You will be able to uh, refund the cost of this card, just like you could do for Dawnstar here. So if you crafted any of the cards I showed you guys today, you could go ahead and get your Soul Gems back on all these cards. So that should be a lot of fun to do. If you went ahead and crafted a bunch of Commanders and don't need them, if you crafted a bunch of Bringer Nightmares, and I mean, if you crafted a bunch of Bringer Nightmare and now it doesn't work at 7 cost, being able to get back all that Soul Gems, 60, Three, uh, 3,600 is a lot. That is a lot of soul gems to get back. For me, Echo Akatosh, I'm gladly going to be able to take back that 2,400 soul gems and use it for other creatures that I've been wanting to get from the Heroes of Skyrim set. Now, with that out of the way, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this brand new update coming from Bethesda and Direwolf. I definitely know that there are some still other little tiny bugs that's been in the game for a long time that still need to be fixed, but I still want to thank them for actually listening to the community and addressing some of these problems. So many people are having a big problems with Akatosh because of higher rank game, I mean, lower rank gameplay. If you were rank around 11, 10, or 9, or 12, uh, you were not really prepared to deal with Akatosh if somebody had three of them or really have that preparedness to deal with three copies of commander for a player who was smart enough or good enough to see a deck online to new craft these right away as soon as they possibly could and that was an issue for some of the earlier players for other players that have been playing for a long time they might have enough cards in the deck as removals to deal with the situation here like i personally did or you play like an orc deck that i like to play in the rank who just rushes to the face anyways and is going to win before commander or echo or actice really gets much value from those cards so these are definitely needed it changes but I know some people are going to be kind of upset that's not far enough or it may be too far. I, I could see somebody wanted this to be still plus two but just a higher cost or somebody to still have Echo Akatosh do exactly what it did just costing more because I could definitely say that Echo Akatosh was a really interesting card when it worked it was super cool but I could definitely feel that the higher or in this case I guess you call it lower rank level 12, 9 or so would have had some problems dealing with this card especially if you're a new player. So this has been Beaky with the Untitled Game Show. For the rest of the video, let's just check out the rest of this match. As you guys have seen, Alduin's on the field. How do I deal with this? I have 24 health. I have a really strong card on the field at 26 damage, but if I can't get this health, 
Well, how am I going to win? Well, first thing first, let's summon up my Blood Magic Lord. We're going to go ahead and sum, uh, shackle our good old, you know, Alduin. Because we don't want Alduin to do anything right here. We definitely don't. And I'm actually going to sacrifice. You'll see in a second. So we're going to go through the match. Once again, I'll have the I have a video link into the deck. Because I'm right now, I don't have it on screen. Because I wanted to actually make sure you guys go ahead and see, you know, the patch note stuff. So Midnight Snack is summoning in the right lane in this deck. We get a, a Iron Scale Dragon, a 7-7. Seven, seven, all really powerful creatures. I mean, like, it looks pretty bad for me. But if I get health gain, I'm pretty much perfectly fine. And I have plenty of creatures in my deck that are going to be recyclable for health gain. And with Blood Magic Lord on the field, I'm going to have plenty of ways to get either health gain, guards, or different situations that's going to help me out. I take out Midnight Snack just because the plain and simple situation is by taking that card out... <clears throat> <clears throat> By taking that card out, I know for a hundred percent fact, just a hundred percent fact, that he's not gonna get any more advantages out of dragons. Now I know I'm gonna have to take away Alduin. Alduin's gonna keep on summoning creatures turn after turn, and it's definitely gonna suck. But now I'm in a good position. All those creatures are shackled. Now I could use my creatures to attack it, then use finish off to take care of that. Uh, my dragon gets taked out there. He's gonna attack to um, face because it's just like I mean at this point you just need to do as much as you possibly can. Uh, that's what I thought he was gonna do at least get another finish off. And I felt like I was in a perfectly good situation at this point. So I'm gonna attack left. Finish off on Alduin, no more summoning dragons. Then we're gonna attack here. Then we're going to attack there, but that was a mistake on my part. That was a complete and utter mistake when I did that. I was thinking, remember, the other dragon reduced my attack, so that was a complete mistake. But I still felt pretty okay at that point, so I made mistakes. I definitely do. I forgot that my, my damage was reduced because of the plays of fact. Some of these heroes are high Skyrim cards. You keep forgetting, like, oh, yeah, the new cards. As a long-time player, you're not really ready for every single situation. And then he basically quits because I have a 26 damage creature in the right lane. And that's basically the end of that. If you guys want to see this deck list, it's in the description. If you guys didn't see my yesterday's video about this deck, it's basically a graveyard deck that's going to constantly come from the graveyard and really go hard. It's really cool. I really definitely check you, recommend you guys check it out. So anyways, guys, let me know your own opinions by commenting below. Till next time, peace the heck out.